faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up there in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! You're tuned to station WGBS, Galaxy Broadcasting in Metropolis. It's time for the news from our sponsors LexCorp and the Metropolis Daily Planet. All over the world, shock reaction is still being registered as Metropolis number one superhero stands in chains accused of crimes against humanity. For coverage of today's proceedings, we now go live to join our reporter outside the city courthouse. On this third and last day of the trial of Superman, as Lex Luthor, president of Lex Corp Industries and candidate for city mayor, presses home his attack as prosecuting counsel against the Man of Steel. He contends that Superman's presence on Earth and involvement in human affairs constitutes a threat to mankind's natural development, a crime against humanity. Amid wide public concern, a manacled Superman has appeared again today in a severely weakened condition. Presiding over the court again today, the strange figure of a non-human, one of the self-styled guardians of the universe, specially approved by the Metropolis authorities as completely impartial. Uh, apologies again for the absence of our regular trial reporter, Clark Kent, by the way. Ah, oh, we're through to the courtroom now. Uh, there seems to be quite a commotion in there as prosecuting counsel Lex Luthor approaches the accused. There must be order in this court. Exhibit K, ladies and gentlemen. Kryptonite. Oh, take it away. Objection, Your Honor. That lead box was empty when it was labeled as Exhibit K. Now we find it's filled with the one substance deadly to Superman. Please. Miss Lane's objection sustained. Close the box. Nonetheless, the point has been made. Your Honor, kryptonite is a radioactive mineral formed by the explosion of the planet Krypton. Fragments of that distant world were flung out deep into space. This exhibit is one of the smaller pieces that landed on Earth. To a human being, an encounter with kryptonite is relatively harmless, but to a native of Krypton, it is deadly. Objection, Your Honor. The existence of kryptonite has nothing to do with Superman's fight for justice on Earth. On the contrary, Lois. Miss Lane. The effect you have just observed of kryptonite on Superman is central to my case. Objection overruled. Your Honor, for the past two days, we have examined the deeds of the uh, creature we conveniently call Superman, but in truth, we are not dealing with a superman. We are dealing with a super alien. A cuckoo in the nest threatening the independence of humanity and whose presence is inimical to the exercise of mankind's free will. The defense moved for a mistrial. Motion denied. Miss Lane. I feel it is my duty to warn you that over the past two days, Mr. Luther's witness have provided strong evidence to suggest that Superman's activities on Earth have already disrupted and will continue to disrupt history. If you do not convince this court of Superman's innocence that he truly belongs here on Earth, he will surely be found guilty of crimes against humanity. He will suffer eternal imprisonment as a disembodied spirit within the Phantom Zone. Your Honor, Superman is held here in chains, sick and helpless. How could he have been brought here so easily? Who did this to him? The defendant was brought here by the prosecuting counsel. The court cannot pass judgment on his physical condition. This is so wrong. Superman. Superman. Can you hear me? Oh, forget it, Lois. He obviously doesn't choose to defend himself. His lips are moving, damn it. May we proceed? Lois, don't 
don't walk away. Can't speak. My eyes, images crowding me. Must fight it. Oh. Let there be no doubt. Here is an alien born on another world. On a Is it like my mother, my father, my son? Jorel, why have you taken our child from the gestation chamber? He's not yet come to town. Is it the disease which clouds your judgment? You endanger our baby's life. What I hope to do will not endanger him, Lara. He will survive. Long after all of Krypton is a shattered ruin. Our son will survive. There must be a cure for the great plague. The physicians... Physicians cannot stop the chain reaction which builds within the core of Krypton. Vast pressures have fused the native elements of our planet into a new metal, a radioactive metal. It is the radiation that is killing us, Lana. And when the pressure cannot be contained within a day, within an hour, Krypton will explode. But our child will perish with us. No! Sealed within that matrix orb, he is shielded from the radiation which kills us. The orb could not survive the destruction of our planet, but it can withstand a journey through hyperspace. What? Across the reaches of the galaxy, I have searched and found a world like Krypton of millennia past. A world called by its natives, Earth. Oh, but, but they are savages. They bare their skin to the air. They touch unprocessed soil. It, it is hell. Not a hell, no. Not for him. Earth orbits a yellow star, young and powerful, not like our red sun. He will absorb that greater light. His cells will become living batteries. He will be powerful. A supreme being among them. A god. Take cover. Planetary crust disruption. Take cover. He will move. He will live. Look now, all is ready. The drive units are primed. Is there no other way? No, Lara. The eruptions have begun. So soon. Only our child. Only Kal-El can hope to save the legacy of that which was great in our world. Great powers have mercy. I must launch the capsule. Then do it. Quickly. Kal-El! Farewell, my son. without ever knowing the touch of my child's hand. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, Your Honor. But how richly ironic it is that Jor-El, the alien that sired Superman, was also the Kryptonian scientist who created the eternal prison of the Phantom Zone. And here today, it is his son that will be sentenced to drift for centuries in that benighted hell. <laughs> Miss Lane, does the defense wish to answer Mr. Luther's statement regarding Superman's alien origin? Your Honor, the next witness can help us establish the exact nature of Superman's non-human abilities, raised as he was alongside Superman, as his brother. The defense calls Daily Planet recorder Clark Kent. Call Clark Kent. Call Clark Kent. Where's your star witness then, Lois? Didn't you get enough time to prepare your case? You know damn well I didn't. Your Honor, the defense had anticipated this absence, or perhaps I should say, 
abduction. Oh, objection, Your Honor. Just because Mr. Kent would prefer not to testify in his adopted brother's defense, uh, Miss Lane implies the, the prosecution is to blame. Sustain. Strike that from the record. In Mr. Kent's absence, I would like to call Jimmy Olson to the stand. Call Jimmy Olson. Call Jimmy Olson. <laughs> Where have you been? I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, it was just awful. It's a long story. I, I, you <laughs> want to get sued for defamation, Lois. To keep accusing me of abducting witnesses. Is that how you're going to get elected mayor, Lex? By kidnapping the other candidates? Miss Lane, the witness is waiting. Uh, sorry, Your Honor. Um... <clears throat> Your name is Jimmy Olson. Sure, Lois. Miss Lane. Jimmy, what's your relationship with Superman? Oh, he's my pal. We go back a long way. And what do you know of his powers? How did they evolve? Uh, well, in the comic magazine Chronicles, he started with really just a superior strength and speed to other men. A greater resistance to pain and injury. And what about flying? Was that something he could do when he started out? Well, in the original accounts, his leaps could cover miles. I guess you learn to use the talent you're born with, like kids do when they play games or something. Last game of the season. Smallville High. Smallville High, Smallville High. Go for a touchdown, see him fly. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Yay, go, Clark, go. Yeah, there's just never been a football player like this amazing all-round champion, young Clark Kent. Touchdown! Hey, Pa! Did you see that last touchdown? I was just about to go... We have to talk. Oh, sure, Dad. Uh, just as soon as I've bought Lana a soda, okay? Now, Clark. Let's go. Um... Uh, I'll uh, catch you later, Clark. Mr. Kent? Thanks, Lana. Are you mad at me for something, Pa? Not mad, Clark. Little upset, maybe. Upset? But I just won the last game of the season. Almost completely by myself. I know that, son. I know. And that's what we need to talk about. That's why it's finally time to show you something. Something you maybe should have been shown long time ago. Jimmy, to your knowledge, has Superman ever used his great strength to hurt anyone? Superman's code is very strict. He's vowed never to take life, but if he catches you doing something bad, committing a crime, he'll exercise enough force to stop you. So he uses his powers to injure and maim human beings. No way, Mr. Luther. Minimum force, that's all. Minimum force? I tell you, boy, people think I'm lucky to own half of Metropolis. I'm lucky it's still standing with this clumsy oaf crashing through walls and drop of a hat. Your Honor, Superman seldom damages property, and even then, only when lives are at stake. Ha! Ah. He's fast, though, isn't he, Jimmy? Oh, boy, I should say, and strong. Like, he just picks up a piece of coal and can squeeze it so hard that the carbon atoms densify. Densify? Yeah. When he opens his hand, there's just a few pieces of coal dust. And resting right in the center, a diamond. Oh, the story is a little different when there's a lump of kryptonite around, isn't it? He's as weak as a kitten, then. You should know it, Luther. You've used it against him. Are you accusing me, Olsen? Uh, no. Good. I'd say Superman brought the threat of kryptonite on himself. But it was the old Superman radio show. The actor playing Superman wanted a vacation, so they introduced kryptonite into the story and had some stand-in grunt and groan for a fortnight, supposedly too sick to say any lines. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Your Honor, the laughter well befits this comic opera. Just the idea of a superhuman baby dragged up in a backwater of American civilization by some, some family of ignorant sodbusters. <laughs> no further questions. You may stand down, Miss Dawson. Uh, Your Honor, may the defense speak privately with the witness? Very well. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Jimmy, where the hell is Clark? It's been three days. I tried his apartment again this morning. Still nothing. Luther set this all up. Superman's the only person who stands between him and the job of mayor. Jimmy, Superman has always helped us, helped everybody. Now we've got to pay him back. We must find Clark. He can speak for Superman. They were raised together. I'm on it, Lois. I also sneaked these out of Luther's case yesterday. Huh? Miss Lane. What are all those figures? Luther's campaign accounts, a great work of fiction. Nice work. Miss Lane. I'll call you. Good luck. Uh, Your Honor. It will help the court's records if you could relate to us your understanding of the circumstances surrounding the discovery of the infant Superman by the Kents. A discovery I only made at age 18. As Pa lifted the boards in the south pasture, I always thought covered a cesspit. Adopted? I'm adopted? I I, I don't understand, Pa. What, what is this thing? Why did you bury it? It's where you came from, Clark. It's where your ma and me found you. <laughs> Are you kidding? We thought it was lightning shooting over the barn till we came out and saw the meteor shower overhead. Oh, come on. Jonathan, what in the world is it? Looks like one of those Sputniks or something. Little rocket. You know, the Russians. Martha, stay clear. Oh, but, but look, there's something down there. Something alive. Oh, I heard they were sending up monkeys and dogs. Don't touch it. What? Oh, Jonathan. Those monsters. They put a baby in a Sputnik. What kind of people are they? I'm going to make sure whoever shot you up in that tin can will never get their hands on you again. Oh, your mother, Clark. Just when we got you back in the house, the granddaddy of all blizzards slammed down. Heck, we didn't get into Smallville for five months. When we did, why, well, Martha just announced you to everyone as our new family member. Oh, wow. After eight years of trying for a child, our friends were just as thrilled as we were to meet little Clark Kent, the baby we'd so often prayed for. Beautiful, bright, perfect. Perfect? What kind of perfect child grows to find himself able to lift a tractor with one hand? What kind of perfect child grows to be able to see through walls? Well, I don't know. I had it a minute ago. There's your first, Ma. He's falling behind the bread bin. What? Behind the... Now, how did he see that? He's two rooms away. What kind of perfect child finds himself hopping over a gate, only to gain altitude till the whole of Smallville is spread a thousand feet below him? trial we move on to examine closely the principal medium by which Superman first became world famous. A medium which still provides by far the richest chronicle of his career here on Earth. Uh, Miss Lane refers to comic books, Your Honor. Call the next witness. Call Jeanette Kahn, president and publisher of DC Comics. It's going to be a pleasure to prove you wrong, Lex. Nobody treats Lex Luthor the way these people do and gets away with it. Ms. Khan, the original Superman Chronicles by Siegel and Schuster were written and drawn mainly for children. But today's DC Comics cater to a more adult readership, do they not? Yes, most of our readers are adults, albeit they're young ones, and our comic books reflect their interests. Superman's appeal, however, knows no barrier of age, sex, creed, or country. 
Comic books convey many basic truths. Really? I thought comic books were designed to make a fast buck out of simple minds. Mr. Luther, you're quite a cynic. It's the contrary. We are publishing sophisticated comics with substantive themes and pioneering art. We have broken new ground both in format and content. Ms. Khan, the new format you speak of refers to the recent introduction of what are called graphic novels. Could you tell us about them? Well, graphic novels are significant stories told with intense, compelling artwork. They're printed using the finest materials and bound like books, not like comic magazines. Indeed. Uh, Your Honor, Miss Lane has failed to declare an interest here. As an associate of Superman, a second-string newspaper reporter like herself becomes an international name through her appearances in Ms. Khan's publications. We portray Ms. Lane just as she is. If she'll forgive me for saying so, she's feisty, independent, tough-minded, dedicated, and a terrific reporter. And why is it then that you portray me as a corrupt, bullying racketeer? Mr. Luther, as I said before, our comic books convey many basic truths. Thank you for your evidence, Miss Hahn. You may step down. Uh, Your Honor, there's a phone call for me in the lobby. May I take it? Five minutes recess. Perhaps the clerk of the court could contact the medical officer. Some attempt should be made to revive Superman, if he is to defend himself at all. Wake up, Superman. Wake up. <laughs> Tell me that again, Jimmy. Well, it all ties up. Luther had served notice on some guy, so the guy decides to sell Clark some inside information on how Luther raised the cash to campaign for mayor. Mm -hmm. I guess Clark must have gone to the LexCorp building with him. Around about the same time, Superman was seen flying in the same direction. Miss Lane, to the courtroom, please. Look, keep digging, Jimmy. I've got to go. Okay. You are Adam West, actor. Yes. And you played Batman in the TV series of the same name? That's correct. Mr. West, from your experiences, would you say costume characters have been an influence for good overall? Well, I think it's very simple to answer that every adventure always presented a very clear case of good versus evil. And, you know, the crime doesn't pay. Uh, doesn't that depend on who the criminal is, Mr. West? What kind of squeaky clean hero openly flouts the rule of law, as certain comic book characters appear to do? It's certainly not a superhero in the traditional sense. Are you talking about a specific superhero? I'm talking about the defendant. Well, to my knowledge, uh, Superman has not gratuitously gone around on the streets beating up people. And let's move on to the comic chronicles, Mr. West. Don't you agree that these publications reveal superheroes to be psychotic sadists living out reactionary fantasies? Objection. Prosecuting counsel is asking the witness to condone his libelous remarks. Mr. West may answer. I think when it's uh, overt or gratuitous sex and violence and so on, no, it's not good. But, but you wouldn't read these publications if they have no artistic merit? Uh, I think th there is an imaginative aspect, a creative aspect that's very good. So you wouldn't dismiss graphic novels as too graphic? Or would you happily go back to the comic books of yesteryear? No. I'd like to see things as uh, a blend, a synergism, a combination. In other words, keep developing, keep imaginative, keep changing, keep progressing, but keep some of the basic wit, humor, and uh, the tone. Thank you. No further questions? Mr. West, thank you for your testimony. You're welcome, sir. Your Honor, I must object at the way the prosecuting counsel attempts to falsely represent the evidence of these witnesses. He continually obstructs the purpose of this trial, which is to establish the truth. Obstructing the truth. Luther's trademark, along with all the other self-serving talents he brought to bear at our first meeting. Welcome to LexCorp, Superman. You've earned every penny 
of this. Uh, this is a check for $25,000. Everyone who's anyone in Metropolis works for me. I didn't come here today to entertain offers, Luther. I came to warn you that the corruption in this town has got to stop. You've made a mistake, Superman. I run this town. Metropolis belongs to me. The people are mine. They've looked at you with your costume and your flashy superhuman powers, and they've forgotten who their master is. Who is number one? Well, I intend to remind them, Superman. I'm going to show them that you're nothing. You're going to be destroyed, Superman. You're a dead man. It's just a question of how soon. It took you a little time, Luther. Oh, my mind must concentrate before it's too late. Your Honor, our last witness lives and works in the United Kingdom and represents the new breed of critically acclaimed writers and artists who have re-established the importance of classic heroes like Superman. I'd like to invite Dave Gibbons to give evidence. The witness is on the stand. Proceed. Thank you. Mr. Gibbons, what consideration do you give to the sensibilities of your readers when writing and drawing these stories? When I approach doing a comic story, I'd like to think I approach it in the same way as any other artist, in that I try to express my views as well and as honestly as I can, and just hope that the reader is enriched rather than impoverished by my work. The Superman of earlier decades claimed to stand for truth, justice, and the American way. How do you, as a British writer, apply that to today's Superman? Well, I could certainly go along with the truth and justice aspects of the, of the slogan without any trouble. And as for the American way, I'd rather like to think that Superman represents the human way, and we could perhaps look to a time when he could represent all the people of the planet. Mr. Gibbons. You have a particularly grisly imagination, don't you? Uh, characters in your drawings are regularly burned alive, chopped into... You okay? Oh. Lana. What? I'd woken with a jolt. No longer on Krypton, no longer even in my bed. I'd hardly begun to absorb what I'd discovered when dawn broke over the pasture and my childhood friend Lana Lang stood over me. The one person outside my family who knew my true identity. The one innocent human that I had hurt. What's wrong? You came charging across your father's field like the devil himself was after you. Lana, what are you doing here? It's so long since you were in Smallville. Why didn't you let me know you were back? I made your parents promise not to tell you. I, I don't understand. Clark, the night before you left Smallville, the night I half expected you to propose to me and instead you took me out for a walk to tell me you were leaving and gave me the shock of my life by flying me home. Clark, as soon as I read the papers about Superman, I knew it was you. And I never wanted to see you again. Oh, Lana. Why? When I saw that paper... I knew you were taken from me. Because from then on, you could never love one woman, Clark. You're Superman. And Superman belongs to the world. Oh, Superman. Clark. That poor girl. That's when I began to see. To understand what hopes Lana had had to abandon when Superman first appeared. And then, slowly, to comprehend how many more ambitions I could never hope to fulfill as Superman. Lana had lost Clark, and Clark could never hope to win Lois, and all because Superman belongs to the world. But which world? It was Krypton that made me Superman, but it is Earth that makes me human. My mission now is to help my fellow human beings but never to upset the delicate system of checks and balances which preserve freedom and order in my earthly home. If I have failed in that, then indeed I am guilty as charged. 
And you must prepare the Phantom Zone projector. Ah, how noble. And so kind of you to reveal your secret identity, Mr. Kent. The radio listeners at home must be thrilled to catch you with your tights down. Damn you, Luther! The court will come to order. Will the council waiver their closing statements in order to expedite the close of this trial? Certainly. Blast this muscle-bound moron into the phantom zone and be done with it. Miss Lane. I've nothing to add, Your Honor. Very well. As the non-human, I feel my only judgment can be based on the fact that Mankind must ultimately learn to regulate itself without superhuman aid. Humans seem to admire those who pursue individual gratification at any cost. Yet, Superman is represented as unselfishly devoting his life to others. If his chronicles continue to observe and show that driving force behind his actions, I cannot see that he is a bad influence. The evidence suggests that Superman is innocent of crimes against humanity. No! He is a corrupting influence on the hopes of mankind! Indeed! If you will allow me to finish, Mr. Luther, mankind's only hope is that he cannot corrupt Superman! Well appeal! There is no appeal. My judgment is final. And having given it, I will return to our center of operations. Please, shield your eyes. Get him back! Lois! Lois! I, I, I found Clark! I found him! Clark? Clark Kent? Jimmy, it isn't possible. You see, Clark is... Superman! You've recovered! Jimmy! Thanks for your help, pal. You're lying, Olsen. Show me, Kent. Show him to me now. Sure. Follow me, Mr. Luther. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot. What the? A present from the police commissioner. He's waiting outside for you. As soon as this trial's over, yours starts. Get these handcuffs off me, you carrot-headed... A fraudulent pest. handling of campaign funds, abduction and bribery, and that's just for openers. I'll tell you what's for openers, boy. You'll show me Clark Kent if you can, while my attorneys throw out these charges. Where is he, Jimmy? It's so dumb, but there's nowhere else he can be. Follow me. Yes.